Are we rolling? We're we're good. We are rolling. We're we are live. Rolling. Welcome everyone to episode 15, 16? 15. Episode fifteen of Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing. I am your faithful host, Bill Schmidt. To my right is Phil. Mm-hmm. To my left, we have a newcomer, Matt. Welcome to the show. Hello. And to his left, we have Kevin returning once again. Kevin, how are you? I'm pretty. I'm pretty all right. Well, good. I'm glad. Huh, yes. Matt, yes. are you familiar with our program? Have you listened to any of it? Um, I listened to about. Five minutes. Of, <laughs> then of you couldn't take maybe it anymore. The first part. Was it the best five minutes of your life? It was. Oh, it was. I. Uh, I needed to change my underwear. <laughs> See, I've listened to no minutes, and really, I've. i really, my life has changed. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not a real big fan. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, would you say that your life has gotten better not listening to? But it's probably just about to stay the same. <laughs> All right, so we're just here changing lives. Listen to us or not, we are impacting your world. Right, it's Kevin. True. You have not listened to the podcast. How would you describe it to Matt, who has listened to more of the show than you? <laughs> well, basically, it's about like, well, the, my experience, it was about me. It was like me sitting down and talking. So I don't know. I can't really explain my, I can't really explain my experience to you. <laughs> it's a lot better because it involves me. It was such a simple question, Kevin, and you It just, really wasn't. Really just fucked it up. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm just trying to, like, Is find some this? good parts of this I'm book good. right here. Did you want to? No, I'm okay. Okay. Because yeah, then I get quiet. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, should t- you should take more, then. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Oh. All right. Kevin, that, that razor-sharp attitude everybody, of yours. Everybody, everybody. Sorry. Sorry. Sweet. So uh, Matt is here. I know Matt. Uh, I used to play in a band called Crow Clex, and we used to play together. Uh, Matt plays in Zoo Funk U. Yes. Uh, awesome uh, bass player, right? Yes, I play the bass. <laughs> and uh, I, I funk it up. Nice, underappreciated uh, instrument. Yeah. yeah, I try to um, really rise to the occasion when it comes to bass players. Like most bass players are like, do 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 do. I was always sick of that. So how 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 do you play it? I play more like. Okay. Sounds like a kind of like a Primus kind oh, of feel. There's, there's some Primus. Yeah. There's like a lot like of can, Herbie Hancock. Can I, a, can I actually ask a question about playing the playing the bass? Yeah, yeah. How come everyone when they when they do the air bass they always play by the up high? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's really, like it's really like down here. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. there's definitely some players like. Is that I a think G- Getty Lee thing? Maybe. Yeah, it's yeah. like a, it's definitely <laughs> like those bass players that are like really like technical and like you know because like you're playing and you're like crouched down and like really focused and like everything's like up here. I don't know. There's and 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 then because of that movie, uh, I love you, man. You yeah. know, where like slap, slap with the, the bass, bass and like he's like does that. Cause <laughs> He's you know, like, what, you know what I heard because uh, have you ever heard of the OCs? Yeah, yeah. They, they, I, I like the OCs, but they like recently like went super like pro, pro far like delusional left, and they were saying that you have to play your guitar up high because it's less aggressive. Because you don't want to be a misogynist asshole like Billy Corgan and play down at your knees like those '90s new metal people. They're like Metallica, Robert Trujillo doing like the crab like under your balls, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> all the way down. That's scaring all the ladies away. <laughs> How so. long have you played the bass, Matt? Um, well, I started playing the upright bass, which is the thing that everyone always thinks is a cello. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I was in orchestra in like fourth grade. Okay. And so I started doing that. I got really into it. You know, I was doing orchestra all through high school. And then halfway through high school, I kind of like, I always knew about jazz, you know, and mm-hmm. I never like really delved into it until sophomore year. I had all these records that were my dad's. And so I'd finally decided to like listen to them for myself. And like, I got my mind blown by like Return to Forever. Have you ever listened to that? No. If you want to hear some crazy jazz, like progressive fusion, it's like, jazz rock and roll like fusion but like also funky sometimes and yeah. like really technical then like return to forever it's like with so chick like korea it, you know chick korea have you heard of him no he's like you know herbie hancock right yeah so chick korea i always thought of as like especially in that area era is like i don't want to say the white version of herbie hancock but they're definitely like counterparts like two huge jazz piano masters and like herbie's got more of like funky jazz things and chick kind of has more of like a latin flavor to him mm-hmm. 
and and they each had their own fusion band. Like Herbie Hancock had his band and like the Headhunters. They're doing all like the funky shit. And then Chick Corea had his band, Return to Forever, and they were more like really technical, like and and they were really inspired by like medieval times and like Renaissance shit. Like Return to Forever's album cover is like a knight on a horse. Like yeah. really like realistic painting, like really sure. majestic. Nothing says jazz quite like King I'm Arthur. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's like a weird like juxtaposition of like classical music and jazz it was and like black Latin metal jazz music. On <laughs> <horse>. <laughs> there is but there's definitely some black metal jazz out there. But like the songs on this album are like the sorceress and like <laughs> you know, the magician, you know, and like the you listen to the songs and it actually sounds like there's like Oh, is it like a tarot card themed? It, it's definitely it's not like tarot card themed exactly but there's definitely like that vibe you know mm. like mythical beasts and like legends and like folklore and stuff so yeah that's and then that's basically when i was like i want to do that i want to do jazz but like i want a horse thing yeah I wanna, <laughs> no but not a like the we don't want i don't want to get into horses and like horse girls <laughs> i want to be a magician you know the girls that like horses and yeah. like they're actually like fucking crazy i dated one of those girls a horse girl <laughs> did, did she have the shoes <laughs> what did she have the shoes uh, i don't remember that what? Yeah, she definitely I, had the attitude though Ke- kelly told me about that her friend invented it but i highly doubt th- they have these horse the hooves. hooves yeah, yeah. <laughs> where where they balance you but they don't look like you'd be balanced so you That's look like creepy. a fucking minotaur yeah, you're like uh, balancing on these like. Could, this girl was a kind of like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Double B bitch. Yeah, but she loved horses. Yeah, pretty much. But she she actually had a horse. I met it. I was. <laughs> it almost bit me. I was reading. <laughs> I was reading this list of like you know the top tens online, and they were talking about how like uh the mo- the top ten most bizarre black metal stories, and are they true? And the one at the top was the was like the most mis- bizarre, but it was fucking bullshit. It was this uh, Japanese black metal band, and the guy has a picture, like for the album, where he's just in the woods bleeding and screaming, like every other black metal. But he has pig hooves for hands, oh, like that's he, fucked. like he's like he put his hands into his sleeves and ho- held the uh, pig hooves. But everybody said that he's so fucking metal that he chopped his hands off to have hooves to be more <laughs> like a. <beast. laughs> and everybody's like, "Well, how the ha-? you know the like the new generation of black metal? Like, you can't sew with hooves, okay? <laughs> I do arts and crafts, you know." <laughs> You cannot hold a needle with a hoe. <laughs> I've tried it. <laughs> Damn near impossible. How would he play the bass? You you just, the I guess that's yeah. like slapping. Though. Yeah. <laughs> you Dude. just like slap it and just... <laughs> that, that was the funny... Like when my band was like breaking up where I'm like, all right, everyone fucking hates me in this band. Was it, like well, The first signal was when uh, my bassist Andy, he, um, he started... Because I think slap... I don't know if it's more... Oh, you need the ash? Or mm. there. I'm good. Uh, you, you, you slap is like a little bit. I don't know if it's easier or more fun. Probably both. You know, it's more fun and it's like the thing that bass is known about. Yeah, people yeah. are like slap the bass. So like you're like, oh, finally I learned how to slap some octaves now, and like <laughs> I can do it. And like people are always like, whoa. But then the people that are in the band are like, oh, he's doing the fucking <laughs> slap thing again. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Can so he, we started playing like for at least like three shows. He started playing slap bass. For every song throughout the whole song, I'm like, dude, oh, no. this sounds like Beatles with the Seinfeld theme in the background. <laughs> you know, like people you, aren't taking this seriously. It's like it's like one of those things that it's like a treat. Like you can't just like slap every song unless you're like Victor Wooten, who's like the master. Yeah, if you've ever heard him, but mm-hmm. like. It, it's like you need to you need to be like a treat. Like you can't just blow your load. Like I'm gonna slap on every song. It needs to be like <laughs> you're playing a song and then like halfway through you just get like a little go bam and It'll then be like, like, you go back to it like a little treat. And then you're like, ooh, that was because the band's gonna be like, they can't hear us because of you asshole. Right? And they they just hear like, like, mm-mm. you got it's gotta be tasteful. I made a comment on I, I made a stupid fucking joke on Facebook, and I had all of my like old like psych friends and shoegaze friends bitch at me. Oh, no. And I think I wrote something like, oh, I used to think the only way you can compensate for a small dick is buying a huge monster truck, like Ford. But I guess it comes in, life finds a way. Because every shoegaze show I go to, you can't hear anything but the fucking guy with three speakers, 90 pedals, and you oh, can't hear yeah. the woman at all singing, you know? What do you got against my Ford, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I drive an the, Impala. I, like, someone at my work drives a BMW. He sounds like an asshole. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
It's like, oh, I love my BMW. BMWs are usually assholes. Yeah, exactly. Dude. No one wrote a song about being a baller in a fucking BMW. It's being a baller <laughs> in an Impala. In Cadillac. Exactly. <laughs> Do you know the difference between a BMW and a porcupine? No. With a porcupine, the pricks are on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> you know what a uh, mu- you know what Mustang and ten pounds have in common? Do tell. Every pussy has one. <laughs> 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 All right, Matt, your turn. Tell us a joke. Uh, it's got to be a car joke. Oh yeah, it has God. to be a car joke, or you can uh, make more joke? bass noises. Uh, you know what BMW stands for? Black man's, man's wiener. wiener. <laughs> I remember that from like fourth grade. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what does uh, Fiat stand for? Fix it again, Tony. Hey. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, guys, we're still waiting on a car joke from okay, Matt. Okay, <laughs> well, I guess it's not a car joke, but I remember we were driving, and I this happened twice on our way to, like, Cleveland or something. We passed, like, the Saab factory, and their motto is, Home of the Saab Story. <laughs> 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 and, oh, I guess I, guess I got a... Wow, look at that. <laughs> I guess I got a, um, a, a car joke. What does Saab stand for? I don't know what. Sorry, ass auto buyers. <laughs> <laughs> that, there you go. That's thanks to my uncle. Yeah. That's perfect. That's good. Welcome to the podcast, Matt. Right? Yes. I popped my first podcast joke chain. Right? You're right? one of us now. Yes. <laughs> this book I have has a thousand names for your penis. Oh. Not counting penis. Oh, but it's like that Tom Green song. Yeah. Have you, do you yeah. remember that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, pet's name for genitalia. Genitalia. <laughs> you know, you got to love him. Him. There's something silly about little Willie. <laughs> Just name any letter. P. P? Oh, good oh, one. Oh, I guess that's like kind of... <laughs> Master penis. <laughs> the pecker. That's definitely one. The pickle. Pickled pepper. Pecker pickle. Uh, the porcelain plumber. Ooh, the porcelain Ooh. plumber. <laughs> the porridge gun. The porridge <laughs> gun. Pork that's knife, grotesque. pork sword. Pork knife. Uh, porridge pump. Power rod. The porridge Power pump. prawn. Why is porridge? I guess porridge is like... Is that, was that published in the UK? Um, or somewhere where they eat porridge? Porridge pump. <laughs> I don't know. They're just like... What's it costs twelve ninety five. Uh, put away your porridge yeah. pump, lad. Oh. <laughs> put away the porridge pump, yeah. eh? <laughs> it's the man book. All right. Please, uh, I yeah. need more porridge. What do they have under Q? Under Q? Oh, that's a hard one. Um... Yeah. The, uh, the quarter master. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> the quarter pounder with cheese. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is that like herpes? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the quick shot Sam. The quick Ooh, shot. That's a good <laughs> <laughs> oh, and don't worry if any of that shit falls because that's... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the quim tickler and the quivering member. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what was the last one? The quim? The, the quivering the member. The one before that, though. Uh... The, the, uh, the quim oh. tingler? Quim tingler. Tickler. What is a quim? Quim uh, tickler. The vagina, maybe? They, have, they also have boobs and vagina in here, too. Nice. Yeah. Boobs and vagina. Yeah. The wacka. <laughs> the Wally the One-Eyed Wonder. The <laughs> wacka flacka. My favorite one is uh, AIDS Your Aid. AIDS Your Aid? Yeah, it's under A, obviously. <laughs> Zamboner. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> Zipper ripper. <laughs> <laughs> I've got me zipper ripper here. <laughs> you mean your porch pump? Busting out. <laughs> the zipper wookie. That's, <laughs> that's a good one. That's the especially heady. <laughs> Aren't you playing with them? <laughs> zipper <laughs> wookie? <laughs> yeah, dude, they're that playing the Reggies. Like band name. They're, they're yeah. Reminds, yeah, wookie foot, isn't that like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, dude. that's definitely wookie a Wookie foot's so good. <laughs> What's up, where's zipper wookie? All right, the so... The song's called K-Sniffer. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's Two pebbles and a twig. <laughs> you could you could use some of those and people like would it, as exactly. a band name and wouldn't they wouldn't know what was that quim <laughs> Qu- quim tickler <laughs> yeah the quim ticklers you just sound vulgar saying that yeah. skeevy's <laughs> lizard it just sounds worse every, every time you say <gasps> <it>. the slippery <laughs> love dolphin <laughs> <laughs> that's great. it nothing will top <laughs> that I'm done <laughs> all right perfect good now I'd like to return to your music Matt oh yes. thank you sorry. That no, I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as much as I'd like to talk about my throbbing blood sword. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean your your quim tickler? Quim t- yeah. Yeah, of your course. quivering member? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> quim tickler would actually be the new single out. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so um, I guess I was talking about Return to Forever in Chick Corea. And then I started smoking weed and playing jazz in high school. Sure, and then. To go hand in hand. Yeah, which, no, yeah, totally. Yeah. And then. Um, Dropped out of school. <laughs> Dropped out of school. You know, weed ruined your life. <laughs> <laughs> no, I went to Roosevelt University. 
uh, or Chicago College of Performing Arts. Is that Arts. some kind of rehab center or something? Yes, yeah. Okay. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, like, chop off your fingers oh, okay. and, like... Replace them with hooves. <laughs> 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 so I did the jazz there, and um, and basically I've been playing with random people. Like, Zoo Funk You, as Phil mentioned earlier, is, like, we're uh, self-described blues-infused psychedelic funk. Okay. So it's very, like, Jimi Hendrix, Allman Brothers, uh... You know, Herbie Hancock and like random like shit like that, like psychedelic, yeah. funky shit. Herbie Hancock, I got in this book actually. Yeah, probably yeah. <laughs> under age. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta say, I love everything that you got with like sax in it. Sax, oh yeah, yeah. that makes it sound so much like. I mean, because I never heard like you. The sax, the sexy ass, like you know, it's like right. the epitome of like what what a basic person thinks of like funk. They're like, yeah, oh yeah, it's like with the saxophone and like. But like in, in in psychedelic music, like you never hear that, or mm, even like guitar guitar. any horn section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we play with the horn Scott section. Or, Scott or funk. Yeah, I can't yeah. do Scott. Scott was always like, <laughs> I always compared it to like all the nerds that were in band. Uh, that wanted to like try being cool were in ska <laughs> yeah. band. No, I can I'm see a, that. I'm a mold. Yeah, I can really see that. <laughs> like, I play saxophone, but I'm not cool enough to be in the jazz band. So I started my own ska I'm band. Mold, you cunt. <laughs> Yeah. Not as a punk. <laughs> there are some good. There are some good ones out there, though. Besides less than Jake, you know, less than Jake's like the bad representation. I remember like Streetlight Manifesto. Yeah, they're really was good. A thing. Mm. I see Mad less than Jake Life, uh-huh. Yeah, the Boss Tone. Yeah, like, yeah. I know I they're really pop. Like Scott's really popular. Yeah. I always just thought it was like it's been around for so long. Too. Uh-huh. Yeah, technically the Clash is Scott. Really? The clash? Yeah, what? it's like combining like two like alternating like music styles together or something. That's what I. That's what I found on the internet. You can't lie. Yeah, there. I can see that. It's like punk and. Yeah. I don't know. Have you ever heard of Goat? Goat. I I uh I I, only, I started listening to that's what I've been recently listening to and it's fucking great. It's like thirteen members. I think they wear wow. like some devilish masks and they wait so ghost goat, like not ah. ghost. I always got to mixed up with ghost because ghost is like kind of metal band and it's like thirteen members and, and they wear masks. They dr- <laughs> they like a bishop with face paint mm. and goat is. Uh, I think they wear like devilish masks, uh, a girl singer, and a lot, and, and they have a lot of sex in it. But it sounds very. Every person I played to, they're like, "Why are you listening to Indian music?" Because it sounds like Indian music. It's got that like weird modal, like yeah, funky note. It's fucking great. And and <laughs> unfortunately, I couldn't fucking see them because they were playing Tally Hall for forty bucks, and I went with Andy once again. <laughs> took. A pinch of a brownie, oh, no. and then Tweaked two out. brownies later, I'm like, I can't see people with masks. <laughs> <laughs> You're tweaking me and out. he was pissed because he's super frugal, my old bit, and that was like a fifty dollar ticket because they were like, I think they're, I think they're from Sweden. Oh, but, interesting. But yeah, or like, have you? I, I I keep mentioning them. Do you listen to King Gizzard at all? Oh yeah, they're dope. I fucking love them. Have you ever seen them live? Yeah, we saw him this year, me and Kelly. And <laughs> Kelly was pissed because it was crazier live show in the crowd than Slayer. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Dude, because it's a, like a lot of like a lot of hipsters that have like that are that's like their only situation where they can be like really aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is our only outlet, okay? Oh. You know, fucking say, cause, uh yeah, but, well, I mean, because before them uh, played like a 70s rock band, like pretty much a fucking copy of like the runways, you know? Oh, yeah. Which I like, but I mean that's uh, it's like not original. I I, I wasn't happy because I love the Gizzard songs with like flute or like the yeah like the little slightly jazzier ones. Yeah, or that uh, you know the Zura the Snake Charmer flute. Uh-huh. I'm like oh, they're not yeah. gonna fucking play this where people are fighting and shit. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. No, there's surprising when I first started dating my my woman Allison we. We, uh, our first concert was Justin Timberlake. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, actually, I'm proud to say that twenty thousand people there, not one asshole. I believe huh. it. And he put on a f- he actually the, put on a, an, a great show. The, but it was except for the funny. one on stage, right? Uh. <laughs> do, you still, do you still have the Bieber fever? Uh, I don't have Bieber fever. Yeah, <laughs> I do. Yeah, I've got a terminal Justin case. Justin Timberlake all oh, the way. God. JT. And but uh, I saw Coldplay live too for with another girl. Well, like you know, way back when. <laughs> and they, uh, the best part of that show, they uh, during this that song "Yellow," they had these giant yellow balloons come down onto like the rich people section, and when they popped, there was yellow glitter everywhere. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bombs. fuck you, rich people. That's magic. <laughs> exactly. Aids of the EDM world. Exactly. The glitter. Glitter. <laughs> the herpes of the craft world. Right. Yeah. <laughs> was that at the uh, Allstate Arena? 
Yeah, oh, you. I think it was like United Center, mm. one of those. Fair enough. Yeah. Did you hear about those glitter pussy capsules? No. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> it was like a fad for like two months because I read an article about that. Like, uh, they had these capsules that you put in a vagina, and then when you're fucking, like, right when you're about to come, like, glitter just goes everywhere. Then people were getting a bunch of, like, infections because of glitter. Dick. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you even do that? <laughs> yeah. um, you gotcha. Can, I yeah. glitter bombed your dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you have yeah. an STI. So. I don't feel so <laughs> good. <laughs> There's this uh, one website my brother uh, told me about. Mm-hmm. Your brother told you about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It's not porn this time, Bill. My sure. brother's friend's yeah. brother. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so a guy yeah. I know. They, this is... Um, this is website. These people for five bucks, they'll put what they offer up services like they'll insult people for you and shit like that. Okay. Or um, I was I almost hired one to send a, a dick a, a dick glitter bomb to my old boss. It was just a bunch of dick uh, shaped confetti going everywhere as soon as you open up the box. <laughs> spring loaded. I'm pretty sure dick, there's like a spring loaded dick bomb, if you will. A spring loaded <laughs> dick bomb. Is oh, that, quivering is, member. Is that under S? Yeah. yeah. Spring loaded. <laughs> <laughs> we can we can we can insert it in here. Or, yeah. yeah. Do, do you have hey, notes in there? Have you been yeah. underlining like? Yes, I have. Make an annotation. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Wait, Smith. I've uh, had this book for like ten years. Oh, I, w- I got your mama jokes right here. Uh oh. And a thousand <laughs> names for boobs. <laughs> we have quite the collection. Yeah. Oh shit! Wow. You gotta. I like reference books. Put the put the thing de- uh, lower than the other one. Yeah, yeah, like that. Do you know how to adjust it on the bottom? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just cause like someone's gonna tip over. So at my office. We recently relocated, and now we're at this temporary space. And they listen to 101.9 The Mix, and it's all oh, like uh, pop can't stand music. That station. Today's hits. And I went from knowing absolutely nothing by Selena Gomez or Shawn Mendes or Justin Bieber, oh, and no. now, now I'm in love with it. Uh, I, I, just, I can't get enough. I just listen to Biggie pretty much every day on my way to work. <laughs> is that, I, well, that's a good way to get pumped up. Is yeah. that like Taylor Swift? No, oh, obviously, yeah. You guys, you guys know what vaporwave is? No. It's like this style of music where it's like a, the ambient songs by like Aphex Twin. Yeah. And so it's so it's like or or like you know like in the beginning of um, Shine On You Crazy Diamond by yeah. Pink Floyd, it's like that slowed down and then chopped up into beats. So it's just like music you listen to to go to sleep. But I but I, I was listening to all this fucking shit that is considered vaporwave. It's I forgot. It's called like a Pepsi bitch. That's her name. <laughs> so she chopped up all these tracks, and I'm playing it like in the car with Kelly, and she's like, "Why the fuck do you listen to Justin Bieber?" Because I didn't realize all the tracks were chopped up from Justin Bieber, just <laughs> slowed down. <laughs> Have you heard that uh, <clears throat> Slipknot Justin Bieber uh, mashup? No. Psychosocial of baby, baby, baby. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's a Miley Cyrus Biggie one too. Party oh. in the U.S. A party in the USA and a party in bullshit. Oh, I've heard that one yeah, for sure. That one's pretty fucking good actually. <laughs> yeah. There's um, uh, Sweet Home Alabama with Country Grammar. Yeah, I think that's by Nelly. That's a good one. <laughs> Matt, Matt, your turn. Um, well, uh, fuck. All right, I've never heard I've that done. one. Well, well me done. and Kevin were saying you're saying yeah. the first concert you took Alice. To, my my first concert I took Kelly to, which is a great, uh, I guess representation of our relationship was <laughs> the Pizza Underground. Because oh, we both yeah. love Velvet Underground, yeah. but we both love fucking around. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you guys know what that is, right? With Macaulay Culkin. Oh it's like yeah, Velvet Underground. And everything's about pizza. Yeah, it's brilliant. It was great. Are they going to play Riot Fest next year? I yeah. hope so, man. Yeah, that's the dream. Tenacious D's coming in uh, November. Uh, they it's sure? already sold out. Yeah, my it's brother sold out got t- fucking immediately. My I'm brother so got tickets. That fucking asshole. Where Where is it at? I don't, know where it's, I don't know where. I don't know where it's at. I can't. I don't have tickets. Mm. I'm seeing. Uh, is that G- like Ravinia or something? I think it's the Riv. The Riviera? Yeah, I'm yeah Jason Riviera. Jason November, though. Jason, what is that? Uh, he's doing like a Q&A thing like Kevin Smith does. Oh, okay. Who is? Uh, yeah, Jay and Silent Bob. Oh, Jay. Yeah, nice. Jay. How's he guys, doing? Uh, he's just doing like a Q&A thing like, you know, like like Kevin Smith does every... Uh, yeah. every he's probably real. just coasting off all that cash, right? Well, is, I, I've yeah. got an autographed copy of uh, Clerks. I'm going to have him autograph it, too. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Is he still on the junk? I don't know. Will you no, ask no. him? No. <laughs> I, I was yeah. telling Kevin, like, l- when we, me and Kelly saw him at uh, the Riv, uh, Jay and Silent Bob, and it was, they were kind of like doing like their podcast thing, and dude, Jason, he's not doing good. Like, yeah. he's fucking, he looks like he's real. I don't think he's on the junk, but he's definitely coming off of it. Like, it was like Kevin had like two water bottles, and he drank, he almost drank all of the two, and Jay had like 
13 Red Bulls and he <laughs> drank all of them. Drinking and all the Red Bull. Yeah, holy barely God. answering any questions, trembling wow. very much. Like it was, oh, man. And he's really, really skinny now. Yeah. You know, the thing that freaked me out is like I knew this girl like when I when I lived back in Chicago. This chick named Mary Santucci. She looked, she was the tallest chick in the class and she looked exactly like Jay. Oh, nice. Was, no. <laughs> and, it, and everybody's like, dude, no, but she's like the tallest so you know what else that means like she's gonna have the biggest boobs the quickest i'm like i don't want to fuck jay you know? <laughs> <laughs> i don't know jay's pretty is cute <laughs> is that the logic like tall means bigger boobs i, I, I that's how i felt it in seventh grade <laughs> no you know you know what was the funniest thing this was the most one of the most fucking awkward moments growing up you know when you have like uh talent show when you're growing up when you're a kid and shit so everybody brings in like something or even like Gavin had one of these where you have to bring something about your culture, you know, uh, whatever, whether it's ethnicity or maybe something that your family practices. Wait, what did Gavin bring in? Uh, he just beat a bunch of kids up. <laughs> 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 oh, sure, bringing the home life to the classroom. No, That's I, nice. I, no, I, f- I forgot what he did. I, I'm like, just don't do your homework. That'll that'll be our culture, you know. So no, no, but um, uh, so when I was in my um. When it, when I was in like I think like sixth grade, everybody like brought in different things, and there was this one chick who was uh, like from Ireland. This chick Noreen, she had like the hugest full grown tits, the earliest. I mean, she had like somebody who has tits like when you're fucking twenty, the but in like sixth the grade. The foreign chicks are always, I feel like, always have big tits. And and so she did Irish dancing, and it was like. Every parent is looking around like every fucking little sixth grade dude is getting like a boner right now with those bouncing around. Like, <laughs> like it was so bad. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I'm going to get looks when Allison watches these episodes. Yeah. We, <laughs> we can't talk too much about seventh grade tits. Every, everybody. <laughs> I'm sorry. Everyone's ashamed of me, so I just yeah. don't have a filter. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't care. <laughs> Just, just blame it on Phil. Exactly. Uh, oh, I'm definitely going on to. Fark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Phil, oh, that's can, right. Phil can claim responsibility right now. Mm-hmm. Wait, 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 he's, a, he's, well, he's probably not going to. He'll like, just edit it out. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And gonna dub, I'm going to dub my voice when you guys open your mouth on the video. Right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, it's like Kung Pao. You know, it doesn't really match. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, you mentioned Varg, and I want to give a quick shout out to all of our fans out there who. Are, I think they're really impressed with us. They yeah. really appreciated the comments we made about Varg in Absolutely. an earlier episode. He's an inspiration. That he yeah. really is. He's a role model. You know, WWVD, what would Varg do? And I think that's <laughs> how we all live our lives. Yeah. We actually might be hearing from him soon. I heard, uh, um, I, I, I haven't been able to get in contact with him uh, as far, like, you know, there, there's, some, there's some paperwork to be done. But, but we will hear from him soon. Perfect. We have some commercials. Uh, we have Pam sponsoring us now, which uh, that's a surprise. Pam, like the butter spray. Pam, like the um, the uh, the the biohazard uh, meat that you can fry. Oh, spam. Spam, yeah. Pam. No, it's spam. Well, we got to call it Pam. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh. What are you saying, Pam? <laughs> but Pam is a different product. Yeah, Pam, Pam is, is, a, pro- is a different thing. Yeah, like yeah. Pam's a cooking spray, right? Am I yeah, crazy? yeah. Pam. Oh uh, shit! I, I did not think that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. I guess you can call it spam. Yeah. yeah, our final episode. Yes, yeah. Yeah. you can call it spam with a B. S B A M. Oh, spam. Yeah, that's yeah. Spam or, or with, with a Z. Z. Oh, oh man, spam. Where is <laughs> I like this guy. Here. Yeah. No, it's funny that you said Pam, and I live uh, with a roommate who owns two bunnies, and the big white bunny is named Pam. So you're talking about Th- Pam does it smell like as like spray? a canned a can. Well, you were talking about canned meat, and I was okay. imagining like how sad it is that like <laughs> Pam and like being compared to canned meat. And I was oh. like, oh, have you ever tasted was... rabbit? It's good. Uh, maybe <laughs> once. I wish I know. I know. We always joke. We so when he moved in, he had two rabbits. And now he's got 20? Well, no. <laughs> we still have two rabbits. But at one point we had three. <laughs> and uh, so the, t- the first two were a bonded cu- a bonded pair, both female bunnies. So we called them the lesbuns. Aw. At Louis and Ella. And, you know, c- my roommate's like a jazzer guy. So it was like Louis Armstrong and, and yeah, Ella Fitzgerald. Yeah, Ella Fitzgerald. And uh, Ella was like the type of bunny with like the floppy ears. And she was like really fat. And like she'd lay down and like, the back part of her would like 
curl up into a roll, like a fat roll. <laughs> and it was like oh, the cutest thing. Oh. And then at one point they got the third bunny, Butter Chicken. Um, <laughs> which is That's named, the name? The name is Butter Chicken. Because <laughs> it was originally a Bunzilla. But she's a big pussy and like she just like was like super scared of everything and she's like an older bunny. So we're like, no, she's more like butter chicken because she's like a big chicken. Mm. And she she was like um, blonde, like almost ginger colored with like black spots, like calico or something That's like cool. that. That's yeah. cool. And um, but she like was like super gimpy, like her back leg was always fucked up. But like eventually there was the three buns and then. Pam inevitably died oh. or not Pam butter chicken. I'm sorry. I'm getting all the names mixed up. Sure. Butter chicken died. And then Ella, the fat one who was always kind of like the dumb dopey one, like got really depressed for like, oh. for like weeks. And like, it was pretty noticeable. Like Louie, it's funny. The dynamic was like Louie was the small brown velvet bun with pointy ears. And Ella was like the big fat bun that like just kind of sat around. And Louie would like face hump Ella. Like, like hump the shit oh, out of yeah. her face like <laughs> that was like their thing and nah, like and it was back? like normal too like they're both females and like they get horny so like louis was like super dominant and would like face hump ella and ella would just like lay there and take it oh. <laughs> so eventually unfortunately butter chicken died and then ella was depressed and inevitably ella also died and my roommate was out of town when this happened and was planning on getting a third bunny pam and they like were at a shelter in kentucky with his girlfriend and they decided to buy the bunny or rescue the bunny because it was for free sure. and they found out that ella died while they were out of town right when they like purchased the other bunny so it's like kind of really weird yeah. and yeah. then like they came back home and introduced louis to pam and, and there was like it was like drama like you would not expect bunnies to be vicious but these buns would like get in tussles like we had to keep them separated and for a while pam was like in her own cage and lou would like just sit by the cage like waiting and like if even if pam went close to the walls lou would like scratch at it or like try biting through the cage jesus like they would yeah. rip each other's hair out like literally they Sounds like, like the bunny kardashians dude it was like in in monty python and the holy grail like when there's like the vicious <laughs> bunny that like yeah not like pointy teeth and like lunges across yeah. yeah it was like that they would like lunge at each other and like their back legs are super strong like if a bu if you're holding a bunny and they want to get away from you they'll like kick you and like it hurts like it, it feels like it sounds like if they get angry at you they'll like thump i'm wearing it's like a thump, like a solid thump. That's like, the pimp bunny with the, the, with the <laughs> ring. <laughs> yeah. Where's my money, bitch? So, like, they'll get in fights and, like, kick each other. And, like, literally one time they were fighting and they both went airborne. Like, they were both in the air. Like, it was like the Tasmanian devil fighting, like, where it's like, <laughs> a tornado like the, yeah. of, like, fur and shit. It's like, they're literally just fighting and, like, fur is, like, exploding. I'm and just like Dragon Balls you now with bunnies. <laughs> no, it's seriously. Like, they're going Super Saiyan. Yeah. And now it's so cute. Now they're, like, best friends. Like, really? After a couple months of like vicious of fighting, and violence, of, and, no, of like, sheer attempted murder, Pam, yeah. Pam is like a big white bun, and Lou is like a tiny little brown bun, and Lou like would kick the shit out of Pam, and and then eventually Pam learned how to fight, and like <laughs> Pam showed Lou like don't fuck with me because like these back legs will fuck you up, but but like Pam now has a scar on her ear because like Lou bit like almost through the ear, but shit. it's all resolved now. They're all they're all they're both. Like they cuddle and like they snuggle next to each other. And Any like, pace humping? The, you know, we actually caught Pam humping Louie the other oh, day, oh, oh. which was like a big, Justice. a big, yeah, a big, uh, you know, turn of the tides. But like Louie was into it, and like now they like both hump each other sometimes. Nice. It's funny they like chase each other around, like, hey, I want to hump you, and like, no, I don't want to be humped right now, and like, go. I, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, man, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, the lesbian life is pretty. Uh, it's pretty enriching. I can imagine. Better than t watching TV, right? Oh, Certainly. it is. Like, but bunny drama? Want, yeah. The, <laughs> but now, um, the well, the past couple months, they've been really into, um, like, burrowing and, like, digging, like, uh, especially into our couch. Like, <laughs> but they've been, like, biting oh. our couch, and, like, there's, like, a hole in our cushion right now. Like, you walk into my house, and there's, like, blankets that are being attempted to cover up all the holes on the cushion and like scratch marks and like it just looks so bad like there's like stuffing coming out of the I, couch and i like, hate like my cats they hide in the couch like oh, if, yeah. if they get real scared like a thunderstorm or something mm -hmm. 
and I fucking hate it because I'll be like playing video games for a long time, not knowing that they're in there underneath your and ass. Then you close the <laughs> recliner, so like guillotines the tail. <laughs> no, yeah, like, and we have a a reclining chair that like we need to move away from the buns because they get they like to go underneath there. Oh God, because they like to like be surrounded in corners. Like that's mm-hmm. like safety. Like when they're in or a like tunnel, a little den. Right, right. So, so they knee. they'd go underneath the <laughs> the fucking chair. But if someone would like. You know, haphazardly just sit into the chair, like sit back. It'll like squish the bun. You know, Whoa. so like my my uh, my hazard. cat, the one that's a kitten. When we first got it, like I was saying, uh, it was like the size of a bottle. He used to hide behind the washer every time, but we kept the washers that the previous owners had. They are so fucked. Like when you load it up. You don't even have to load it up. They vibrate so oh, hard. We, we had the yeah. neighbors complain. Like it sounds like there's like a Millennium Falcon landing. <laughs> <laughs> Not, like like the walls have cracked because of it. Yeah, Holy so shit. that sucks. You know what's funny? How you're saying like the bunnies kept like they're really horny or whatever. Uh-huh. I was watching a hunting show. Have you ever <laughs> watched a meat eater? No. It's it's ki- it's pretty cool. I, I I I don't know. I I, I feel like the 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 ridiculous cheesy old man i was like yeah you gotta go hunting you gotta be a true american but i was watching it was pretty interesting and they have these deer i forgot what kind of breed but there's like this one week out of the whole year where they get really really fucking horny and you're supposed to go hunting then that's when they're the tastiest well well, well, (laughs) exactly well that's because when the blood is flowing that's because when all the deer whores come out and they're they're they they make this noise that they're you know when you, you know when uh when there's like an overwhelming sound like like if you're at a show there's a sound coming from one direction so it kind of makes you deaf in one Ooh, ear I like when, one direction's good too yes <laughs> thank you for mentioning them oh that really fucks up your ears now but <laughs> and no but you know when there's an overwhelming like like if you'd be standing in the middle of the highway and there's semis going on both directions yeah that's how fucking loud these deer it, they they explained it where it sounds like if Mordor had a trumpet signaling. The Lord of the Rings war. Like oh yeah, because <laughs> they're like, "Fuck me!" Yeah. <laughs> I'm horny as shit. <laughs> Fuck me! I wish humans did that, right? Just once a week, like. You gather up and make a bunch of disturbing noises. Fuck! Let's fuck! Right? Well, I think that there's, like, uh, modern calls now. Like, you know, like, you can tell, like, by what they're posting on Instagram or, like, <laughs> on Facebook. You can just go to a Tourette's Syndrome uh, uh, support group <laughs> yeah. instead. Yeah. God. Just make funny sounds there. Dude, as, as, as self-deprecating as this, I actually make a similar noise to what I just did when I have a seizure. Yeah. I'm not kidding. And That's and it, it's yeah no I um my brother it was it was this it was funny as depressing as it was because bef- so he has the same condition as me but before he had it I used to make that noise right before I'm about to have a seizure and during that time there was this viral video where uh somebody they were in a computer class in like a high school yeah. and somebody hacked uh all the computers to where like as soon as you start it um, like the kid got kicked out of the class. It zooms in on a gorilla's face and it just goes oh, for like 20 minutes. <laughs> and it, and everybody's computer it. did it at the same oh, time. Oh no. So when I, so when I started to have a seizure, he thought I was trying to be funny, like doing that, like first thing in the morning, Hey, alarm clock. Oh, no, I need my pills. You know, oh, no. like, <laughs> that's <Damn>. fucked. <laughs> yeah. And th- and that's what sucked with having a fucking alcoholic roommate when I lived in that condo that I was talking about. Gre- like, I would, I guess I had, uh, like, I tried, you know, you um, when you s- kind of put your seizures in control, you, they try to wean you off of them. I was living with somebody who, I'm not kidding, would be passed out naked every single night. So I guess oh, I was having seizures God. for like three years, and he didn't know it. Yeah. He's like, oh, he's just a weird fucking guy. He makes those noises, you know. <laughs> but like, you're like, <laughs> just having a shit ton of seizures. Yeah. He probably That's wouldn't remember fuck. it. Yeah, yeah. You probably not. I miss Greg. Well, be happy you don't get seizures, people. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I used to when I was like two. Really? Did yeah. Uh, fever-induced ones. Huh. Yeah. I can't yeah. Even. So I have a. So speaking of, like, you know, like. Speaking of happy stuff. Yeah. Speaking of. Yeah. Stuff. Speaking of seizures and uh, depressing things. No. Uh, a thousand words for breasts. Ooh, I think mm. we should do that. Cones. In the next interval. Yeah. Smashing don't, pumpkins. Okay. Well. Phil, your mama is so fat, her nickname is Damn. 
Wow. Yeah. All right. Cricket, yeah. cricket. Yeah. <laughs> cricket, cricket. Ju- it just reminds me of Major Pain. Your mama's so fat. She played pool with the planets. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little better. Wait, oh. what were we going to say, though, Phil? Oh. Ooh. <laughs> I downloaded a soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I was saying, like, I t- I've been, uh, t- you know, I mentioned before, I've been taking CBD for, mm-hmm. um, because it helps with, you know, anxiety and seizures. And I, uh, I didn't know this, like the, the CBD that I've been... T- so I looked up, like, what is the best CBD oil internationally, specifically for, like, epilepsy? And it's called Charlotte's Web. And I uh, thought... Yeah. Did you bring that book? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't have those kinds of books. <laughs> we, we need the sad soundboard for that. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Charlotte's Web. Yeah. <laughs> No, but uh, we um no I I I'm like why the uh, fuck is th- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like why the fuck is that company called Charlotte's Web? And I found out that it's a weed strain that is like 95% CBD, 5% THC. It's actually a strain. It's not just oil. Right. Yeah. So I went and applied for a medical card, and I'm gonna have my appointment next weekend, and I'm gonna be like, cause I smoke cigars, and I really would not like to, and yeah. I'd rather smoke weed. That isn't gonna make me tweak out. Right. Exactly. So because the weed gets you high and you get all anxious and yeah. tweaky, paranoid. And it yeah. and it's funny because you were saying um our Domino San- Zach Sandry on our show before, uh he was saying that like you can't get it because if you have a Foid card, can't. right? So uh, message to our kids, card, you can't get a medical card. Apparently, that, that I mean that's what Zach said. It's making any sense. It's so like if you have a medical card, that means like if you have a gun, you'll probably not use it as much because you won't yeah. be angry. <laughs> like, what? But I think it's something with like medical diagnosis or yeah. like mental. Dude, you passed out from uh, from smoking. You guys don't like you don't want to shoot people up when you get high. That's w- I mean usually. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Are you fighting the urge right now? Just, <laughs> yeah. like, reach for your <laughs> gun. <laughs> <and shake him. laughs> trying to chase the dragon. <laughs> so you're doing it. You're getting the card. Mm-hmm. It's um. It's a lot cheaper than um, I tried doing it like a few years ago. It's like 300 bucks for like three years or something. At, well, that's... I was looking w- that up too. When I first went, it, they said it's a $400 appointment just for the doctor and then another $400 to get the prescription. Wow. Like it's for, you know, it's kind of like a checkup or, yeah. a, or a, what is it, a physical. Yeah. And then, but now it's uh, 70 bucks for the uh, physical and he prescribes it you that uh, that day, and then you have two follow-ups a year, which are eighty bucks each. Nice, oh, that's chill. Just pretty chill. So and you get prescribed the day you get the physical. Yeah, and and not to and and but the thing that is bothering me is you don't know how much a strain is going to yeah. be costing. No, yeah, yeah, I heard that the weed prices in Illinois are going to be pretty, pretty high, like three hundred dollars. Pretty ounce. high, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Right. Oh, Soundboard. Well, <laughs> my, uh, <laughs> my phone is going to make phone keeps going it's on. It's okay. We, we got <laughs> our, our mouths. Oh. No, that was but a the, great joke. That was good. But the the reason why I'm happy is like I don't smoke weed a lot, and I don't even take the CBD oil a lot. It's like you know when I'm having anxiety or can't fall asleep from like working out too much. So I mean I could get one prescription and just use it for the whole year instead of two follow ups. Yeah. So. so you can go. I, no, <laughs> my issue with the medical card is that. Once you're doing it legally, you're no longer like a criminal and you lose a lot of street cred, <laughs> I think, which is one of the benefits of not getting the card. Well, Being considering sick. I used to sell, I kind of feel like a rat, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, you're, you're leaving the dope game. Right. And it's been so I good to go you. I got to go legit, man. I got yeah. a family. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, go to a pharmacist instead of a dealer. Tried like getting some real spaghetti and now it's fucking egg noodles and ketchup. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's when, no, it's in it's in Goodfellas. Oh. So he has to start fresh after he uh, goes into witness protection. <laughs> gotcha. I don't know. It ain't the way it used to be. Nah. When I was in Portland, I remember we hit up a dis. Actually, there were dispensaries everywhere. Oh like, yeah. Oh my God! You can't walk a block without yeah. like passing three of them. And I remember. Sounds nice. I was hoping that it was going to be like super, super cheap because there's so much supply. And I wasn't astounded by, I was like, wow, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's like $25 for like an edible and like street value that I pay for Bud. And I don't know. I had more faith in capitalism than this. Yeah. I heard uh, like San Francisco is pretty chill with weed. And I read an article that like um, they are, I mean, I'm not making fun of this, but they are so 
super like progressive over there and like open mind like to everybody and every, like everybody just do whatever you want man that they actually now they're using taxes more into like food kitchens and shit for the homeless they actually have to train not kidding they have to train the homeless teach them where to go and how to shit because really? they're <laughs> shitting in the middle of the fucking sidewalk oh everywhere God. the fuck yeah I mean, you know, sometimes you just gotta shit. Yeah, right. yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's a natural know. way, man. I'm gonna shit on this yuppie's face. <laughs> <laughs> man, California is so expensive. I was looking at real estate over there in like the Northern California, like Silicon Valley area. Yeah, twenty five hundred dollars will rent you a room in a <laughs> house. Oh, wow. like, fuck. Yeah, Damn. I had someone like, oh hey, I want to rent a house in San Jose. I was like, okay, cool. I'll check it out for you. And I was like, here, you can rent a spot for your IV or RV for $2,500 a month. Like, it's fucking insane. That's ridiculous. For an RV. Wow. wow. Yeah. like For like a little slab of concrete, pretty right. much. Yeah. And I don't know. Uh, Screw California. Yeah, fuck you, California. Yeah. <laughs> you guys insult the French and international people. I love them. But California, mm -mm, real estate's too expensive. It's I expensive. think we should go there and take a shit on the sidewalk. Oh my God! Road trip? Yeah, we could go on tour. <laughs> shit, first we, shit first across we got, the land. First, we got to use some sidewalk chalk to make Varg's face, right? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> oh, our fans would love that. Wait, what if you started a whole new band where you like dress up like Varg and Mayhem, and but then like sing about like Christianity, like being like Dude, a Christian black metal band? I'm, I'm not kidding. I wanted to do that. I'm not even fucking kidding. <laughs> I would love to do that because when you think about it, how much Christians pillage and rape the fuck out of that culture that's actually like metal more shit. metal yeah it's some metal shit whoa, whoa imposing whoa. your religion on other people is some Wait. like heavy shit hang on you're accusing the christians of pillaging and raping the viking culture well they all did everybody, well, everybody. yeah but viking culture is all Based about pillaging, pillaging and, raping. and raping yeah so it's like you know I don't know. I don't feel like what they deserve. No. Yeah. I just I just think it would be something new and cool instead of like you know, just have a band that sings crazy fucking music, but you dress up like very nice choir boys. Sure. You know? <laughs> that, yeah. It'd be fucking new. That, I actually wanted to make, have like a joke black metal band because all the covers are like, they look like they're melting like this. <laughs> and I was thinking of like when you go to Giordano's and they have that stretched pizza in his mouth. You know? <laughs> oh, have man. covers like that. <laughs> Let's get pizza after this. Does pizza any, is great. Do you guys know Richard Cheese? Yes. Oh, I fucking <laughs> love Richard Cheese. Okay, what Dick is that? Cheese. Dick Cheese. Oh, he's yeah. like a singer. He sings. He's, um, a lounge, he's a lounge singer. He's a lounge singer. Dick Cheese. And Richard all Cheese. He's, he covers all the all songs, but in a lounge setting. So like he'll do like "Let the Body Hit the Floor," but oh. in like a jazz Let like Frank bodies. Sinatra. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he did. Um, he did like uh, "Baby Got Back." Yeah, Chop Suey, like System of a Down, like oh. Wake Up. <laughs> Grab yourself and if bring I play a little music, makeup. Will it, uh, <laughs> will, will it uh, flag it on whoever you post this on? Yeah, we might. Yeah, we will. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. let's <laughs> refrain from that. Actually, you know, yeah. yeah. Or uh, you want to take a quick break? Come back. Here's some yo mama jokes. Here's some pet names for boobs. I'll promote more of my bands. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. And Kevin, I want to hear about your bands too. Oh well, you know. <laughs> After we come back, <laughs> exactly. think about it. Sit on it. Okay. All right, we'll be right back. I got something for you to sit on. I gotta wipe <laughs> off my dick cheese. <laughs> yeah. oh. Is it your slippery love dolphin? <laughs> <laughs> My quivering member. <laughs> You're fucked up, dude.